Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I am compelled to address a problem that I have seen. Uh, I've addressed this problem in the past. I made a couple of other videos citing this problem. Uh, one in particular going into quite a bit of detail. Uh, explain what the problem is and uh, proving with scriptures the correct doctrine but <clears throat> now it's 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 kind of reared its ugly head again um among us uh, the, the the people who fly the banner of saved by grace alone through faith alone in christ alone they, called the grace community um, and yet <clears throat> we still have some people um, among us um, who uh, on one hand we <clears throat> we think that they are um, saved believers and, and then after a while, you, you discover that they they don't really believe in this in this uh, doctrine or this, this this creed. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. <clears throat> uh, about a year ago, approximately, I had to disassociate myself with two brothers. I and I call them brothers because I believe that they believed correctly and they got saved, but they don't think that other people are required to to believe grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone. That they can be saved thinking that uh, salvation comes by faith and works. And uh, if someone believes that faith is not enough, your religious works contribute to your salvation, then that's okay. They're going to be saved anyway. <clears throat> not only is it not true, but I personally <clears throat> cannot be associated with people who are going to uh, teach that and, and uh, espouse that and promote that. Or, or it, it has to be stood up against. Uh, so, um, I've got some scriptures I want to go over, but let me let me review for a moment the uh, the five solas of the Reformation. <clears throat> some things that came out of the Reformation I'm absolutely against, like the, all the doctrines of Calvinism, but the idea of disassociating ourselves from the Roman religion and the Pope uh, that was a good thing. Uh, and 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 then believing that salvation is a, a free gift received by faith in Jesus, not earned by our religious works, uh, that was a good thing that, that was uh, emphasized in the Reformation. <clears throat> and they they kind of coined a a phrase or a, a slogan or a creed, or but it's called the five solas. Sola is Latin for only. I mean, I think it means like soul, S-O-L-E. It's the sole thing. It's the only thing, okay? <clears throat> so um, that's why we say faith alone, or you could say sola fide. Sola fide is, just means, uh, it's Latin for faith alone. Uh, but uh, the five um, um, solas of the Reformation, first is sola scriptura, scriptures alone. This is how we uh, test all beliefs. Can that, is that found in the Bible? Is that, is that uh, uh, tested to, is that uh, affirmed in the Bible? The Bible is our source of truth. Now, as we read all these other 
extra biblical materials as we listen to other Bible teachers or scholars and commentators, um, they very well be speaking truth. But their words have to be tested against the scriptures. The scriptures alone is the final authority for what's right or wrong. And then, so what do the scriptures say? The, the scriptures say that our salvation is by grace alone. And, and, and there were, in other words, <clears throat> God is gracious toward us. And that's the only reason that salvation is even possible. Because God is being gracious to us and has nothing to do, to do with our merit, our deserving of salvation. It's entirely because God is gracious, not because we're deserving. So grace alone. Now this grace that God has for us, it's received by faith alone. Faith alone. Uh, that means that uh, um, nothing else can be added and, and faith in Jesus, believing in Jesus, trusting in Jesus, relying on Jesus, uh, this faith, this reliance is all that is required of us by God to be in good standing. Faith. Our religious works uh, have no value. They have no uh, place as a formula for salvation. You first believe in Jesus, and then you become religious, and if you're religious enough, then then you're going to be accepted by God. Uh, th that's false. It's no religious works on our part, and it's only faith. But this faith must be only in Christ, um, sola Christa, Christo, Christ only. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. If not only must be faith alone, with no religious works on our part contributing towards our salvation, only faith, but the faith must be entirely on Jesus. We can, if we have any faith, put in something else or someone else besides Jesus, then it's not, it's not Christ alone, is it? It's your faith is divided. Some faith in Christ and who he is and his promises and, and, and what he's done for us. That yes, they have faith in Christ. But their faith is not entirely. Their faith is not in Christ alone. They also have faith that their circumcision uh, qualifies them for salvation, or their water baptism qualifies them, or their church attendance qualifies them, or their ability to get sin out of their life qualifies them. <clears throat> but people who believe that, then they don't really believe in Christ, faith alone in Christ alone, do they? Even though they may say they believe in faith alone, but the faith is not entirely in Christ. Their faith is divided. Um, Christ plus something else, something else that's a con con contribution on our part. Um, and then the, the final sola is uh, sola. Uh, Gloria, uh, so Gloria, and, and they uh, they deal. I think is the, the full Latin expression of it. Uh, only glory to God. Man cannot boast if if salvation comes by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and we have no contribution to it to earn our salvation, then we're not able to boast. We can only boast in our great Savior God, Jesus. All the glory is reserved for our Savior God, Jesus. 
So, uh, and if we, if we uh, think that uh, we play some part in the salvation in terms of our our ability to to be religious, our ability to make ourselves righteous and acceptable to God, then then uh, we would have the also have the right to claim some glory for ourselves, say, claiming that look what I've done, I, and that's what I I see an awful lot in in Christendom. Among all the people who identify themselves as some kind of a Christian, almost all of them, their plea for their salvation is, look what I've done. Instead of, look what Jesus did for me. Uh, so uh, only with grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, does the glory alone go to God. That being the foundation of this uh, lesson here today, uh, I'd like to say I, I made a video, I think it titled uh, Unadulterated Grace. <clears throat> and, and that video and this video is a response to the, the attitude that um, someone gave me about a year ago saying, well, you're, you're a hundred percenter. You're, you're one of those 100 percenters. Yeah, yes, that's a good a good way of expressing it. I believe a 100% of my faith has to be in Jesus. I can't have 50% in Jesus and 50% in my own righteousness, my own ability to be religious enough. No, it can't even be 90% in Jesus and just 10% on me. How about 99% Jesus? If it's just 1%, all you, the only other thing is you got to get wet, you got to get water baptized. No, not even 1% in what we do. 100% faith in what Jesus has done on our behalf. So, um, when I hear people say that uh, those people who believe in Jesus, and they also believe that works are required for salvation, to either gain their salvation or keep their salvation, or works are the proof that someone truly did get saved. Uh, the people who add works to this and make it into a formula, faith plus works, then uh, some people are saying that that's okay. Even though, even though they don't believe in the works themselves, they say, if someone else believes in Jesus, and yet they also believe that you must be water baptized, or you must take the sacraments, or you must do certain th whatever things are on the, the list, that that's okay. It's 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 no big deal. That's okay, and. Actually, last night I heard someone express it in, well, so what? So what if they believe works works are required? They believe in Jesus too, don't they? So let's address this now. This is the problem. And let's look at some scriptures here. See what the scriptures tell us about this. First, Romans 10, 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So this, this verse here is very, very important, and it explains the condition of the world as a whole. It says, for they, that, 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 that can apply to everybody in the world apart from this little tiny fraction of people who truly believe salvation is a free gift, received by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. A tiny little fraction of the world believes that. And all the rest, this is what they believe. They believe that they can establish their own righteousness, and that's the means of salvation, instead of submitting themselves to God and saying, my righteousness is like filthy rags. It has no value. I will not present that to you in my plea. I need the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I, that's what I need. Uh, so Romans 10.3 shows us the condition of the world. 
uh, and this is not only just uh, people of all religions, but probably 90% of all Christendom, all the people who identify themselves as some kind of a Christian, still believe that their own righteousness, their own religious works, uh, factors in to whether they'll be saved or not. <clears throat> but Galatians 3.10 tells us, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth, not in all things which are written in the book of the law, to do them. So in Galatians 3.10, we're, we're learning that for those people who want to be under the law and use the law as a, a systematic means of working for and earning your salvation, if that's what you believe, if that's the means of salvation, if that's the source of salvation for, in your opinion, then you're under a curse because it's God is so strict that you have to follow the law perfectly from your first breath for your whole life until your last breath you will uh, can never have had one bad thought you could never have done one bad thing and every moment must be done nothing but good if you neglect to do good constantly, you've also failed. So uh, who can pass that test? No one. So that's why it's a curse. If you, if you want to be judged by God based upon your ability to be good, your religious works, your righteousness, then the standard is perfection and we will all fall short of the glory of God. No one can achieve that. So now we, we know that this is the problem of the world. Think, people think that they can depend on their own righteousness. We also know that if you, if you adopt that as your uh, philosophy or as your, your plan for salvation, then you're, you're cursed because it's impossible to do it. But in Acts 16, 30 and 31, the Apostle Paul is asked, about salvation. Uh, the Philippian jailer and, and Paul, this is their conversation. The Philippian jailer asked Paul, and sir, sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's one of the most important questions ever asked, along with who is Jesus? What is the purpose of, of life? Um, what must I do to be saved? Uh, if you've never asked the question, I'm, I'd be surprised. If you've asked the question and never really been uh, gotten the right answer, then here it is. The Apostle Paul answers, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So, uh, Paul did not give them a, uh, a one-hour uh, course uh, on theology. He condensed it into the, the essence and, and simplified it. Into, into what really everybody needs to understand. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what is required. Believe on Jesus. Now, <clears throat> believing on Jesus, um, it doesn't mean to surrender your life. It doesn't mean pick up your cross and follow him. It, it doesn't mean... Uh, uh, Repent of all your sins and get all the sin out of your life. Believe on Jesus means that you are going to depend on Jesus for the salvation. You're going to rely on Jesus for your salvation. You're, you're going to bet everything, put all your confidence on Jesus. Believe on Jesus. Um, 
Now, he didn't, he didn't say believe on Jesus and get water baptized and make sure you're circumcised and follow all the laws of Moses. It says period there in the house. Period. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Um, but if we believe on Jesus, or in some places the Bible says believe in Jesus, believing in Jesus doesn't mean that you believe in him, that he's a actual historical figure that really lived. No, it means that you believe in his in him for your salvation. You're believing in his faithfulness to give you salvation as he promised. You're believing in his ability alone to give you salvation. But whether we, you say, believe, I believe on Jesus or I believe in Jesus, it must be 100% Jesus, because you cannot say that you believe in Jesus for your salvation and at the same time say that, that uh, you believe that religious works on your part are also required to earn salvation, because those are two totally different things. Believing in Jesus, that means 100% believing in Jesus, Christ alone. <clears throat> so you cannot add anything to that. And uh, Jesus was asked a similar question by the Jewish religious leaders in his time. John 6, 28 and 29. <clears throat> they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this to believe in the one he has sent. So Jesus said, the, the work is to believe in Jesus. That's the one thing that's required. He did not say anything else was required except to believe in the one God sent and the one he's referring to is himself. God the Father sent the Son to be our Savior. And people need to believe, they're required to believe that. That was Jesus' answer. And then, of course, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, he, he really clarifies all this. And he kind of like uh, gives you no wiggle room. There's no way. Not only can we say that, that in, in Acts and in John, that Paul and Jesus are just stating simply, believe on Jesus, believe on Jesus, okay? But now Paul says, not only that, I want to make it very clear to you, works have no part in this as, as part of a faith plus works formula. Paul writes, for by grace are ye saved through faith. So you understand that now. Because God is gracious and because you put your faith in Jesus <clears throat> and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Uh, this, we're talking about the gift of God is the salvation and the grace. Some people teach that the, the gift is the faith. <clears throat> but, no, the gift is the grace of God and the salvation, the eternal life. That's the gift of God. <clears throat> but it says, it's not of yourself. It's not as a result of anything that you've done in order to earn it. And he goes on to say, um, it is the gift of God. A gift, of course, is something that one person gives to another without any compensation, without any uh, recompense. They give it freely with no charge. It's free. So we could say free gift, but that's redundant, isn't it? Because a gift is always free. <clears throat> And verse 9 says, not of works. So Paul is clarifying here. He says, works don't have any part in this. Get that thought out of your head. Otherwise, he says, lest any man should boast. Otherwise, we could have gone before God and boast about our works. 
if works were, was part of a formula for salvation. We have nothing to boast about because salvation is not the contingent upon our works. And then Paul writes in Romans 3, 27, 28, more about boasting. He says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. In other words, there is no room for anybody to boast if their belief is that their own religious works don't contribute to their salvation. They have nothing to boast about. But if you believe that your religious works contribute to your salvation, then it's possible you could be a boasting in all the works that you've done. And of course, uh, if you're boasting, you're claiming some of the glory, some of the credit for yourself, instead of all the glory alone, going to our great Savior, God Jesus. I said, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what? Law? Of works? Nay, but the law of faith. The law of faith. In other words, I don't know if you ever thought about it or realized it, but this teaching that we're saved by faith alone is a law. It's the law of faith. The law that faith alone in Christ alone is what saves us. That's the law we need to, to, to understand and follow. And, and then he says, therefore, we conclude that Man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, over the years, I've had some people ask me, well, where in the Bible does it say you're saved by faith alone? And you do your concordance and your word searches, and you never find the term, I say, by faith alone. Uh, or faith only. But then they'll point out to me in James where he says, you're, see, I you're justified by your works and not by faith only. So on one hand in James it says you're justified by your works and not by faith only. So Brother Luke, show me where it says you're, that you're, you're justified and you're saved by faith alone, faith only. Well, every verse that says you're saved by believing in Jesus, you're saved by your faith, faith, and 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 then the, there's nothing else mentioned, is stating that you're saved by faith alone because they're not including anything else in, in it. They're saying it's by believing, by faith. So that should settle it. But this one, Paul gives us no way around it. He says, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That's alone. Faith without the deeds of the law means faith alone. Now, this idea of works are not required for salvation, there's two things that you need to understand about this. One is that uh, we, we must never impose religious works on others or ourselves on the, on the premise that works contribute to our salvation. We, we never impose that. We, works are never required. A person doesn't have to do any religious works at all. But uh, we must also understand that anybody who is putting their faith in their works is, is violating this, uh, uh, this concept, this law of faith. <clears throat> and we go to Titus 3, 5. He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So Paul again is saying, get your righteousness, your filthy rags righteousness out of here. Get it, God, that just stinks and to God. Uh, now, in Romans 4, 4 and 5, it says, now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So in other words, if a person is working for their salvation, they're doing religious works, whether it's trying to do good things, trying to do religious things, 
or avoiding doing bad things. Uh, all this effort that they're putting into to make themselves righteous in the sight of God, acceptable to God. Uh, if if you, people are doing these things for that purpose, it says, if you're working, the, now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. So grace is not part of it. If, if you're if you're doing religious works to earn your salvation, you could go to before God if that was correct and say, "Here's the works. I kept a diary, all of my, the works I've done, and now you're in my debt. You owe me. I deserve heaven." <clears throat> That's what a lot of people think that the judgment is like. But all your all your works are like filthy rags, count for nothing. But all, all your sins are just it's mind boggling. If a person understands how sinful we all really are, our thoughts, our deeds, our neglect. But then, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now the important thing to understand about this verse, when it says, but to him that worketh not, that not only means there, there are some people that are just not doing any religious works at all. But they're still saved because works are not required. You don't have to do any works. But another important thing to understand from this verse, it says, to him that worketh not, to the person who is not working for their salvation. Doing religious works in order to earn my salvation doesn't even enter my mind. So, I am someone who is working not for my salvation. If you are someone who is working for your salvation, then there's a problem. But it says to the person who is not working for their salvation, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So not only are you not required to do any religious works, but you must never even dare to think that you can do religious works as a means of gaining salvation. Otherwise, you're working for your salvation rather than relying on, on Jesus. In Galatians 2.16, Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, over and over again we're seeing the, the contrast. Not by works. Yes, it is by faith only. Not by works. Yes, faith in Christ only. Over and over again. I'm only giving you a few examples. I can give you a hundred even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law since by the works of the law no flesh will be justified. That's about as plain language as you could possibly make it. No one will ever be justified. No one in the past, no one in the present, no one in the future will ever be justified by their own religious works. Now, the verses I'm going to go over next are clearly here for a reason. When Paul writes down something, much of what he, he gave us in his epistles are, are answers to problems that are existing at that time. He doesn't say things just for the, the entertainment value. He's saying it because he needs to clarify something that is wrong. So what was going wrong then and what is going wrong now, today, some people actually are saying, like I heard last night, so what if some people think that it's faith and works? They, they still believe in Jesus. That's good enough. 
I'm sure people in Paul's time were saying the same thing. But Paul was Paul wants to clarify this. No. It's got to be entirely faith in Jesus. You cannot add anything to that or you've ruined it. In Galatians 2.21, Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I do not frustrate. If, if, you're, if frustrated means you're, you're not able to, it's not able to do what it's intended to do. The grace of God is, is intended for our salvation, but it can't give us salvation. It's being frustrated. It's being nullified. It's ruined. If you add law, you have frustrated grace. You've ruined it. Now here's, here's, that's all been KJV, but this is amplified translation that expounds a little bit on this that I, I like the way this is expressed. And it says, I do not ignore or nullify the gracious gift of the grace of God, uh, his amazing unmerited favor. For if righteousness comes through observing the law, then Christ died needlessly. His suffering and death would have had no purpose whatsoever. Or as I heard Sister Renee state yesterday, uh, she said that the people who believe in uh, faith plus works, they basically are believing that Christ accomplished nothing on the cross. Nothing was accomplished. If Christ accomplished nothing on the cross, and that's why people have to do these religious works. But the Bible says he did accomplish salvation for us. So I, I think that the most important things I want people to understand is that Uh, in, in my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, and in our Church of the Eternally Secure, we've been promoting the idea that we must have unity on the core doctrines of Christianity. That is, the deity of Christ. Jesus is eternal God Almighty. God manifests in the flesh as the Son of God. Uh, He's not a created being. He's eternal God Almighty. Number two, that salvation is not earned through any religious works on our part, but received as a free gift by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Christ was able to accomplish this for us by his death, burial, and resurrection. And three, that the gift is secured. Once we put our faith in Jesus, it's irrevocable. We cannot lose our salvation for any reason. But those are the three core doctrines that we insist upon, that we say the Bible is dogmatic on this. It's clear we must all agree on this. <clears throat> now, there's a there's hundred other theological subjects that are interesting, and we can allow for differences of opinions. But on these core doctrines, there can be no compromise. We cannot say that, well, I know that some people believe in Jesus, and they believe in works too, and that's okay. So what? They, they, they do believe in Jesus. So, so what if they believe in works too? I hope this teaching today lets everybody know why. We cannot tolerate that. Someone a year ago uh, that I had to disassociate myself with referred to me as a 100 percenter. And that's what the Apostle Paul is. That's what the Bible says. 100 percent faith. 100% reliance, 100% dependence, 100% confidence in Jesus. If we have 1% faith in something else besides Jesus, our own merit, or anything else, then you've nullified the grace of God. You're frustrated. It has no value. Christ has died in vain. Christ has accomplished nothing on the cross, if that's what they believe. So as for me, I will not tolerate it. I will not Except I will not have fellowship, uh, and I will uh, denounce anyone who says that. Well, you know, 
my faith is entirely in Jesus, but I know that there are a lot of people who believe in faith and works, and that's okay. It's no big deal. They still believe in Jesus. No, it's unacceptable. We need to stand up against that. <clears throat> all right, so thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God,